Welcome to the Ark Encounter, a full-scale replica of Noah's Ark in northern Kentucky. My name is Christian, and I'm a geology student. Recently, I began studying the rock layers in this area. Unbeknownst to most visitors, the ground beneath their feet contains millions of fossil organisms. As it happens, some of those fossils are exposed in this cliff here right behind me. This road cut lies at the edge of the Ark Encounter's parking lot on the drive leading to my hotel. This is the Cope Formation, and it's a very common geologic formation in this part of the world. A geologic formation is essentially an assemblage of rock layers. The Cope Formation is very extensive. It occurs across much of Kentucky, Ohio, and Indiana over a distance of about 200,000 square miles. Now, what's unique about the Cope Formation is that we find of a wide variety of fossils of shallow water marine organisms. Things like crinoids, sponges, trilobites, and brachiopods. Let's go check them out. I slowly scanned the rocky exposure for fossils, and within just a few minutes, I realized they were everywhere. Beautiful branching corals lay shattered in pieces on the bare ground. I could see small fossilized shells in almost any rock I picked up. See these right here? These are brachiopods. Now brachiopods are small clam-like animals. They have a shell, as you can see there, and they would have lived on an ancient shallow seafloor. Just to show you some of the variety of brachiopods that we have out here, there's this one, and it's huge. So I found this, and it looks kind of similar to that fossil we found earlier. It's this kind of groove-like structure in the rock here. I think these are worm burrows. Now, as you might guess, worm burrows form when animals like worms are moving around in the mud and they leave these, and they leave, uh, these burrows behind. Now, you might kind of wonder how on earth something like this would get preserved. After all, when we look around the world today, generally speaking, these uh, features like these don't usually form fossils. Well, the key here is rapid burial, right? You need these delicate features to be covered in enough sediment quickly enough before other natural processes can destroy them. This is a nautiloid shell. Nautiloids are pretty cool. They're kind of like octopus when they're alive, except unlike a, an octopus, they would have lived in a shell that was shaped kind of like an ice cream cone. And they ranged in size. Some of these individuals were pretty small, like this little guy but some of them could get up to 20 feet long. The Cope Formation belongs to the Ordovician system of the geologic column. That's going to be pretty close to the bottom of the fossil record. And what's really common in Ordovician fossil deposits around the world are marine fossils just like this. And that's really interesting considering these fossils of shallow water marine organisms are buried on the continents in these thick water lane sedimentary deposits. That's why many young earth geologists place the Ordovician layers within the context of the global flood described in the days of Noah. It would make sense because at that time, the, flood, the uh, seawaters did rise and cover the continents. What you'll notice about a lot of the shells found in the Cope Formation uh, in outcrops like this is that they're very, very well preserved. Now, that's kind of strange when you look at the shells of modern organisms on our, on our uh, present day seafloors you'll notice that the ones that have been lying around for a long time have all of these holes in them. Now those holes or borings are caused by other animals like mollusks that will, that will puncture in through the shells. So the fact that you find shells like this that don't have those borings in them suggests that they weren't lying on the seafloor for a terribly long time, which suggests rapid burial, at least more rapid than other animals could start boring into them. These shells could not have laid exposed on the sea floor for more than a couple decades, but the Cope Formation also presents evidence that is difficult to explain in the context of the flood. One example is the presence of hard grounds, traces left by once living organisms on a hardened seafloor surface. Hard grounds form when sediment accumulation stops, allowing the seafloor to solidify into rock. Over time, these surfaces become encrusted with seafloor organisms. Some hard grounds in the Cope Formation appear to have been home to colonies of bryozoans, which grow slowly, similar to modern coral. Other hard grounds, known as tripanides, 
are littered with burrows, probably created by worm-like animals that used acids to bore through solid rock. While there is significant evidence suggesting that the Cope Formation developed relatively quickly, some findings indicate it took longer than the time frame allowed by the flood narrative. While studying the Cope Formation for his senior capstone project, geologist Ken Colson proposed an intriguing tentative solution. What if the formation didn't develop over millions of years, or within just one year, but instead over a period of time somewhere in between? Colson suggests that the Cope Formation may have formed over a span of a few years or decades at most, resulting from successive large-scale catastrophes interspersed with relatively brief periods of calm conditions. He proposes that vast, shallow inland seas might have covered large portions of the continents before the flood. If this is accurate, the Cope Formation wasn't created during Noah's flood, but represents a thriving ecosystem that existed on the continents leading up to that catastrophic event. So what do you think? Are the fossils of the Cope Formation evidence of the flood? Or were they buried in the tumultuous times of the pre-flood era before the flood itself even began? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.